Hello and welcome back to my studio. It's Lois here from Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this painting of the South Downs that sweep across the southeast of England, very close to where I live. Uh, they're very close to my heart. I often go walking there and they are a constant source of inspiration to me. This painting isn't from a photograph, it's from memory and imagination and I really enjoyed painting it and allowing the little chalky sheep paths to show through the grass here. First of all, I sketched it out lightly in pencil and once I was happy with the sketch, I used waterproof black fine light liners, my um, Faber-Castell artist pit pens, to put in the line work because this is going to be a line and wash painting where I put in an ink outline and a little bit of shading and that will give me my outline and my darkest darks and then the paint will come in and give me all my mid values. My lightest values will be what's left of the white of the paper and some of the palest watercolour. I'm going to use the wet in wet technique for this and it's quite a long process so I shall speed up the footage for you a little. I'm going to start off by painting in the sky with clean water and using the wet in wet technique and a large wash brush which is a size 20 Escoda Ultimo synthetic mop. I shall just put in a nice pale sort of summer sky with cobalt blue and a touch of ultramarine blue. Keeping it nice and pale, allowing the white of the paper to show through for clouds. I've now swapped over to my one and a half inch Princeton Aqua Elite Mottler brush. It's a synthetic flat brush, um, gives me um, a lot of different uh, brush strokes. Using a big brush keeps me nice and loose and I can put in the first coat of the lovely green rolling downs and get some of that green into the mid-ground trees and the distant trees. I'm using sap green, which has got a little bit of uh, burnt sienna into it, just to make it a bit more earthy. And then I can add a bit more burnt sienna and some perylene green to it to darken it in places. Drying out the brush and I can remove excess paint if there's too much where I don't want it. You can see here I've dabbed some perylene green into that green mix to make it nice and dark. So I shall continue to work across the scene, introducing the green using the Mottler brush um, just to build up my first layer.
So that's the first layer just about done. Nearly all the painting, in fact, has been done with this first pass, wet in wet. I'm now using my palette knife to scrape through the rich um, mid-value paint. And this creates the suggestion of the chalky um, sheet paths that are worn into the hillsides and are such a distinctive feature of this part of the world. So now I'm going to go and make a cup of coffee and allow this all to dry completely. And now that it's all completely dry, I'm going to take a small calligraphy brush, but you can use any small brush with a good point that you like using, anything that can hold a fair amount of paint. And I'm just going to put a little bit more detail onto the trees using a stronger mix of paint. Dotting and dashing it here and there, particularly around the edges of the canopy. I'm using sap green with some perylene green, a bit of burnt sienna in places, and maybe a touch, a touch of Payne's grey here and there to darken it. So I'm building up shape and form in these nearer trees. Not too dark, but just enough to give me that kind of look of shadow underneath the canopies here and there. And that should contrast nicely with the lovely bright green on the top of the hillside. I'm now painting in the shadows on the lower parts of the hillsides and some sort of cloud shadows coming over in places. So I'm just going to paint on either side of the sort of sheep paths and I'm using sap green mixed with perylene green and a touch of Payne's grey and a little bit of burnt sienna to sort of warm it up a bit. The brush I'm using is an Iskoda Perla brush, a synthetic size 14 round brush. I'm trying to keep it sort of darker towards the bottom of the hills and then lightening it up a little bit as we go higher up. And then I'm going to be leaving the tops of the hills the way they are from the original wash. Now I'm using quite a watery light value, but strengthening up the trees in places in the distance. 
I'm keeping it sort of a little bit bluer, a little bit paler than the rest, so that that will push that stand of trees into the background. Finally, using the palette knife just to scrape through that rich paint and then I'll add a few more dark shadows here and there to the canopies of the mid-ground trees. I'm carefully adding a few little dots and dashes to break up the edge of the canopy in some places. That just gives a suggestion of a bit more detail there, um, turning the trees into the main uh, point of interest. The little um, chalky sheep paths around the hills, of course, draw the eye, but I'm hoping that they move the eye around the painting lead the eye to this little copse of trees and just to keep the eye on the trees for a little bit longer I'm adding a few touches here and there of a mid to dark value burnt sienna. This um, here will just warm up that area a little bit and that pop of colour of the red or the reddish brown against the green will stand out nicely as red is the complement of green. So I'm going to call this quick painting finished and if I remove the tape we'll be able to see how it looks with its clean white border and see if it needs anything else. Um, I think it would be lovely with uh, a few birds in the sky, maybe a pair of buzzards circling over those stands of trees or maybe even a few figures and a dog, um, maybe people out for a walk across the downs in the beautiful weather. But I'm going to leave it as it is. And I hope you found that helpful. So thank you very much for watching. Please leave us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to everyone that supports us on Patreon. Uh, we couldn't run the channel without you and we really do appreciate each and every one of you. And if you'd like to support the channel, then please consider um, following the links below. I'll see you again soon. Take care and happy painting. Bye.